Hey, what's up guys, Aaron over here, and welcome back to another episode of my F1 22 My Team Career Mode. This is episode number 7 today for the Monaco Grand Prix, the duel in the Formula 1 calendar. We come to the Principality for the first time in My Team Career Mode on this game. But if you guys did miss the previous one and the Spanish Grand Prix, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one, because that was uh, quite a chaotic one for us, uh, but personally, we had a bit of a roller coaster race. I think you could say at one point we were facing backwards on oncoming cars and a car that was uh, very much broken down and DNFing and then at the end of the race we actually looked at some decent points but the big winner from that was the race winner spoiler Max Verstappen getting his first race win of this season which is kind of crazy to say but Ferrari have been so dominant in uh, in the game since launch we're still waiting on a performance patch really to maybe adjust things to be a bit more realistic but to be honest that means that when Red Bull get quick we're all going to kind of bu bunch up together in terms of that championship fight so we may not be in the championship fight we may be in a midfield battle a lower midfield battle with McLaren and uh, the likes of Alpha Tauri maybe but at the sharp end hopefully we will get a proper fight between Leclerc and Verstappen that will go all the way to the end of the season right into this episode then pretty fitting that we're going to be splashing some cash as we go into the Monaco Grand Prix because we've got three million dollars on the budget there so we can finally purchase the 2.5 million upgrade to the aero department which is the fabrication so that will mean we can make two upgrades at the same time we've already had the build time upgrade on the aero uh, and the chassis and, and the engine of course we started this uh, the entire series off with level one and everything for the chassis side of things so we're having to build up the aero and engine departments to match the chassis side of things so really good to get that underway because I think we can really delve into the drag reduction and downforce but having a look at the driver market then just to show you guys the stats right now and the focuses of some drivers and to point out that yeah Drogovic is I think 76 uh, focus wasn't it there he's actually one of the highest rated focus drivers I think there's only a couple people that beat him out like Sonoda, Fernando Alonso I think is one of them, Ocon Russell at 75 I think um, and yeah Drogovic 73 sorry 73 focus so very very decent and we've got a lot of drivers that would be that are lower than him right now so I think we can't be too disheartened by that. We do have an HQ facility event about Drogovic, about filling up their calendar or keeping the current schedule. It's either going to be a boost or nerf to the morale of the powertrain department and then, you know, vice versa, uh, affecting his experience. We've gone for the morale for the powertrain department and uh, minus seven is experience. That will just affect him temporarily for the R&D he'll earn here in the practice session. But the reason why I went for that was I didn't want low morale for the power unit department because we've got an upgrade pending and I don't want that to fail if they're low morale for whatever reason you know yeah you know it might fail I don't know I don't know if it works like that because we've already purchased the upgrade but I didn't want to take that chance so we went for that one one temporary episode where he's got uh, you know minus seven on experience won't hurt too much I hope and after practice just before we get into the proper meat of this Monaco Grand Prix we're going to purchase some more upgrades we've got 1000 R&D points we've already got three big upgrades on the way for Baku but we go for the weight redistribution I did want to go for some aero, but we don't really have the funds for that. The front nose cone upgrade for the front downforce, that's not got discount at all, which is weird because every other thing I've, I've got has got a discount. So I don't know, it just hasn't cropped up uh, for whatever reason. So we're going to wait and hold off on that. But to be fair, we have a lot of upgrades coming in after this episode into Azerbaijan, like I said. But we are now here at Monaco and it is not sunny. It is rather dreary because we have a wet Monaco qualifying. Yep, the first time I'm going to drive this car around Monaco is going to be in the wet. Absolutely outstanding. I mean, to be fair, we're going to put this setup onto max downforce, the wings as high as we can get, because even in the dry, that would be, that's always the way I go around Monaco in the dry and the wet is just the wings at the highest level because you want the maximum amount of downforce to dance the car around to make the difference as the driver does so much of the time around Monaco and uh, you know in, in keeping with that around the wet Monaco circuit we can make a big difference just by getting more confident in the laps we're doing and on the second run we've gained nearly one and a half seconds this might be by the end of the lap let's see through the final bend get the nose turned in easy on the power trying to get full throttle as early as we can and in the end it'll be uh, just about 1.4 let's call it if you round up to get through into Q2 
just about in P16. Drogovic there, P17. Such a shame. It could have been two... It could have been both of us into, in through to Q2 at a place where obviously qualifying is the most crucial. But I'm very happy to get through. Drogovic lacked a little bit of pace, but not too far off to be fair. But um, yeah, it just wasn't meant to be. But uh, you know, you've got some big names out there as well of Hamilton and Vettel. But Hamilton's the bigger surprise there. He keeps having these poor qualifying sessions, you know. He's had some great races at, at the same time. So yeah, I've said it before, but you know, the game so far is doing a good job of actually coding Hamilton's AI quite quite well for this season in terms of the vibe of, you know, he's a bit on and off sometimes so far with his new era of cars and his Mercedes more specifically. Well, we have now got a second session of qualifying to do, something we haven't had to do for the last couple of episodes, so this is a bit of a privilege, but also a pain because we're still on the full wet tyres and you're just tiptoeing around trying to find the grip, trying to find the confidence within yourself for the braking of a throttle pedal. But uh, the car's feeling not too bad, you know, for what I thought this car was going to feel like in full wets. So I think having the downforce on the maximum uh, portion... I think is working very well for us and just making me a bit comfortable in the car at least to try and get some lap time out of it. But you can see I'm going quite easy into some of these turns, just not wanting to overdo it and get a bank of lap time in here. It's not going to be anything special, but we'll go again and that will be the one where we push a bit more. And you can see here now we're a five tenths up trying to go onto the limit into this final sector. The checker flag's fallen here and we are nearly up six to seven tenths just on that, you know, that was a really good exit through swimming pool and through Raskas as well gaining up to nine tenths even a second so we've gone so much more aggressive attack the circuit and we'll gain more than a second and across the line will that be enough to get us through into the top 10 shooter a second gain no not quite p12 though p12 that is very decent. But hang on. The story of qualifying is not us in P12. It's the championship leader, the home favourite, Leclerc. The Monaco curse continues in the F1 game because Leclerc, he's had a howler. Perez didn't even set a lap time. I don't know what happened there. Perez with a DNF in Q2. Uh, Leclerc, though, he didn't get a lap time in. What happened there? It's a howler from him. He's P14. I think he was behind on circuit, but I was gaining one second. He did go for a second second run so it's not like uh, I don't think he just did one slow run and that was it he did I think he was out on circuit for his second run but uh, he just didn't find the time I mean to be fair Verstappen was very very close to being knocked out by Lance Stroll so we could have easily had Verstappen and Leclerc being knocked out just showing how treacherous those conditions were and how well of a job really more so than we've done to get P12 at least ahead of the championship leader um and an okay position you know from P12 you know we have a really aggressive good though clean lap one there's a chance we can get into a points paying position and then obviously Monaco being Monaco you try and hold that position because I don't think we'll be doing too much overtaking in this race to be honest but we'll see about it. it is the F1 game but let's go to the grid then we've got a very topsy-turvy one potentially a very interesting front row that could be quite worrying for Leclerc Nelson PK wants it. Nothing. He's saying nothing because he's now banned from the paddock. Goodbye. There's no more prestigious a Grand Prix victory than Monaco, but also none so challenging. The prestigious Circuit de Monaco then is not all that dissimilar today for the layout that made its debut almost a century ago. It's two miles and 19 corners through the streets of Monte Carlo. And although the average lap speed of around 93 miles per hour is the lowest of the season, the tiny margins for error make it the natural habitat of the safety car. So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. World champion Max Verstappen starts from pole position. And the smooth operator Carlos Sainz completes the front row. Considering the rest of the grid we have, Russell, Bottas, Fernando Alonso, and Norris. Mick Schumacher, Magnussen, Joe, and Esteban Ocon. Stroll, the owner driver, Pierre Gasly, and Leclerc. Ricardo, Perez, Felipe Drugovich, and Sebastian Vettel. Sonoda, Albon, Hamilton, and Nicholas Latifi. And now it's time to head down to the track. 
A warm welcome to Anthony Davidson, who is beside me in the commentary box today. Now, can I get your take on Max Verstappen? That was a great win in the last race. Can they keep that momentum going this weekend? There are never any guarantees in this business, but certainly the performance last time out would have boosted their confidence coming into this one. So Max Verstappen, having won the last race at Spain, is on pole position. And, well, he's got one Ferrari alongside him, but the lead Ferrari in the championship is behind me even in P14 at his home race. So this is a big, big chance. Again, like in Miami, for Red Bull and Verstappen to get a load of points, get a win maybe, whilst Leclerc gets lower points, maybe zero here at Monaco compared to Miami, because Miami obviously uh, you know, was a bit more inviting for overtaking. Obviously at Miami, though, Verstappen ended up with a DNF, so they didn't make the most of it. They got a chance here, though, at Monaco to do so, and they're you know, on pole at a place where pole matters the most. For us, though, we're fired up. We're feeling punchy. Real nice tyre warm-up, real nice park-up, and I'm really excited to just attack this circuit on the opening lap to try and jump ourselves up and then try and see what we can do in terms of defending, attacking, and what is going to be a very challenging race. One of the hardest races, I think, in terms of concentration for the entire race distance. Here we go. The duel in the Formula 1 calendar. The Monaco Grand Prix is underway. It's lights out, and that is the most perfect star you'll ever going to see on the F1 game. It was like I was counting the seconds down to the lights gone out, but I genuinely just released the clutch as soon as I saw the lights, and that was lightning reactions. We almost try to take two cars for one. We've got Stroll. We're going to try and get that second car still. Ocon, I'll have to leave him on the exit of turn one, but through into Casino Square, we're able to get the move around the outside and get into a points main position already. P1, yellow flags behind. I heard some crunching. I think there was maybe a front wing or so off and no no Felipe Drogovic our teammate Felipe he's out and he's caused his safety car whilst he's at it as there's a Williams car out I think as well let's look at a replay this is Russell who qualified third it's a slow start from Sainz will Russell get into P2 here I want this side by side with the Ferrari no Sainz will get the good exit but Russell gave it his all but it's still then Verstappen ahead of Sainz Russell follows Bottas in a P4, lofty P4 for Alfa Romeo. Really loving life ahead of Fernando Alonso, Norris. You've got the Haas cards. You've got Grant Ujo, myself overtaking Ocon there as we see a, a, a repeat of that. Leclerc, ooh, tried to make a move on Ricardo. Thought better of it. And there is the contact. And it's Sonoda, sorry. I thought it was Albon that was out, but it's actually Sonoda. That is, I mean, to be fair, maybe Albon is out as well. But, oh, just a really unfortunate Constantina and um, Domino effect there. And it's Sonoda and Drogovic that are out. The Williams cars actually made it through, I think. But they've got front wing damage. So that's why the safety car came out. And now that's why on lap four, on to five, we are going again. So we've lost some laps of Monaco, which I'm not going to complain about because that's a few less laps we have to worry about as uh, the rear end squirms away as the tyres aren't fully fired up. But at this stage, you've got to say, we're in points. You know, let's be real. Especially season one on the F1 game, Monaco. It's very much like real life. It's very hard to overtake. I'm not in a particularly great car. If I wasn't a quicker car than the guys ahead of us, then maybe there's a chance to attack. But right now, I'm pushing on the absolute limit and edge of this circuit just to try and keep up with Granu Joe and keep in the DRS. That Alfa Romeo has turned into a really amazing car. I mean, you're seeing Bottas in P4 there doing an excellent job ahead of Alonso Norris, pressurizing Russell maybe for third place. And Grand Yu Joe, rookie into Formula 1, doing a great job here. He's been getting some points as of late in the Alpha. And, uh, you know, we're trying to, you know, suss out. Is there any way, any place to make a move maybe on him? But it's difficult, you know. I, I would love to say I want to try and do that classic Larascas dive bomb that I'm known for around Monaco in career modes. But it's going to be difficult because Grand Yu Joe is just so quick in the corners. We're pushing flat out, but I can't get close enough. This is as close as we have gotten on lap nine, but I just don't dare make one because we're not near enough. We, we get close on the entry of swimming pool, but on the exit of swimming pool, we're not getting that leap and bound that we uh, need to make that crucial dive. And on the main straight with DRS, we're not getting close enough. Lap 12, Verstappen dominating this one, 2.3 ahead of Sainz in the Ferrari. Uh, Russell, uh, then three 3.4 back, so a bit of a gap forming between the top three guys. Bottas then with a bit of a smaller one back to Fernando Alonso, but I think he's got that P4 pretty nailed down, unless there's a mistake there, but yeah, it's 
Alonso from Norris, Schumacher, Magnussen, the two Haas cars just quietly doing their business once again in around P7 and 8 like they were at the Spanish Grand Prix. Grand Yu Joe, myself, and then you can see Ocon is actually closer to maybe uh, pressurising me than I am to pressurising Guan Yu Zhou. So we really need to, I don't know, I, I, I don't know what we can do really because this is the pace we've got. I mean, unless the hard tyre magically is better for us, I don't know. But even Leclerc's having troubles. I mean, he's in the quickest car, been dominating this entire season. And even he's stuck behind Lance Stroll here in the Aston Martin in P13. So, you know, season one at Monaco, very much the same vibe as real life. So, so difficult to overtake. Perez, you can see, down the order after that incident at Mirabeau on lap one. I think he had to maybe pit as well as he got caught up in all that concertinering. Lap 14, again, we get close. We even get a good exit and we have some ERS, but we nearly deck it into the wall there. You know, one more second of us uh, kind of, you know, wayward rear end on that left-hander. We would have been into the wall there. We are really pushing the limits here through Casino Square, just applying as much pressure as we can to Guan Yu Zhou. And he makes a mistake. He makes a mistake into Mirabeau. Finally. Oh, after all this time, you know, literally 10 laps of pressurizing him since the safety car restart. And finally, finally, the rookie cracked under pressure at Mirabeau. Lock up. We go down the inside. Very easy move up into P9. But it took so long. That's what Monaco is like. You're just going to keep on going. Relentless pressure. Eventually, we get the move done in a very unorthodox place. That I don't usually make overtakes at uh, as much as Raskas, I would say, around this uh, around this circuit. But, you know, we were we were known for a couple of Mirabeau dive bombs here and there back in the day, you know, over the F1 game. So I'll take it. I'll take it with a mistake from, uh, from the Chinese driver. Now, lap 18, we're in for the hard compound attire. Gran Yu Joe follows me through along with Esvan Ocon. So... Uh, just kind of covering us off, I guess, with the, the, those two. And also the Aston Martin garage is out as well. We're in. It's a good turn in. Not optimum, but yeah, we'll take it. We'll take it. It's an okay stop. Nothing insane. And you can see actually Bottas got such a good stop that he kind of ghosted through me there. Um, so, you know, if this was a bit more realistic, that maybe would have been a horrendous crash or would have been maybe a penalty for, for my team for letting me out a bit unsafely. But we go through and we move on then later onto lap 22. So we're already two thirds of the way through this race because, yeah, from, you know, from when we overtook Guan Yu Zhou to, to the pit stop, nothing really happened for us or anyone. And then from the pit stop to lap 22, well, the only thing happening was Gasly here. He was on the hard tyres to start with, so he was backing Bottas up into Alonso and everyone else. But he is now in for the medium compound. He actually did, though, some really good laps, I must say, on the hard compound. So let's see where Gasly filters out. It could be quite close to us, and he's on the mediums. No one else is on the medium, so he could be quite a dark horse, maybe, you know, in the end of this race. Is There he is, and we're only just about going to overtake him. They say for Guan Yu Zhou maybe as we go through turn one Gasly is going to slip through just ahead of his, of his arch nemesis Esteban Ocon in P12 so Gasly on the mediums just out the, outside the points this could get interesting maybe if he has some genuine good pace on the mediums to attack the Alfa Romeo attack me meanwhile the home favourite having a miserable weekend bad qualifying and all this race stuck behind cars and he's now stuck behind Dan and Ricardo, which is worse than being stuck behind Lance Stroll because Ricardo is a bit of a quicker car than the Aston Martin but yeah so very difficult even for the rain uh, for the uh, you know the, the championship leader at the moment to overtake meanwhile though the reigning world champion is in first place dominating this one 5.6 seconds ahead of Sainz in the Ferrari Russell still in P3 I'm still I'm still very impressed though by Bottas in P4 I gotta say uh, in the Alpha that is really quite an astonishing position to be in and I think he's done it a couple of times where he's been you know around P5 P6 and uh, P4 maybe his highest so far or might match his highest results so far but you can see for Leclerc there's just no way he's making an overtake like there's no there's no spot where he looks like oh I'll make the lunge I'll make the dive with DRS here will he be close no Ricardo's actually pulling away from him what is going on with Leclerc right now does he have maybe a worn engine as well uh, you know would su suggest that if Ricardo's pulling away off the final corner but yeah this will be massively frustrating for him and just kind of shows off um, how difficult it is, you know, with, with these very big cars around Monaco. 
even for the quicker cars, you know, Hamilton, he, he qualified, you know, you know, not got knocked out, and he's stopped behind Sebastian Vettel now. Lap 33 then for number 33 before he got the number one in his car, and looks like number one these days is unlucky for him because he's got a smoking engine. Don't tell me for a second race he's going to DNF out of a race winning position whilst Leclerc is lower down. This is unbelievable luck. I mean, he's how much bad luck can you get as a, as a team, as a driver? This is not on. At what point does Verstappen leave Red Bull? Could he leave Red Bull halfway through season one at this rate with the driver transfers? Because that's mad. He's gifted Carlos Sainz the lead again, like in Miami, where he was leading in this similar fashion. Leclerc in Miami was on for a couple of points. This time, this was an open goal for 25 full fat point against his nearest biggest rival here in the championship and, and Red Bull have stuffed it. Pa Red Bull powertrains, the engine supplier that we have, have stuffed it. We've had Gasly with two DNFs, Verstappen with two or, and, and Perez with one. Um, you know, we're, we're actually quite lucky as a customer of Red Bull powertrain that we've not had an engine failure ourselves, or Drogovic has not. Like, we're very lucky. Like, this is concerning. This is already making me think, do we need to move away from Red Bull powertrains into Season 2? I mean, I'll see how the performance patch goes and see how that goes. But yeah, lap 39 then, Carlos Sainz is gifted his second ever win in Formula 1. And with his teammates scoring zero points, this will bring Sainz into the championship fight versus his teammate. Russell gets a great P2, but let's take a bow and clap for Valtteri Bottas. P3 in the Alfa Romeo. What a result that is for the Flying Finn. Absolutely astonishing stuff in the Alfa. That Alfa at the hands of Bottas in this game so far in my career mode save is different gravy. He is doing insane for us then. La uh, lap 39 at the end. We've been just, you know, keeping Gran Ujo at bay this entire race. Gasly let down on the medium tyre. No progress. He does get a point, but that's because of Verstappen's retirement. And we're going to come through for four points in P8 then, thanks to Verstappen's retirement, giving us one more free position then. It's been a classic Monaco Grand Prix, a war of attrition, and just holding our own in concentration. And we almost lose it at the last second. Honestly, the concentration levels just go at the end after you've been doing 39 laps of this circuit. But we come across the line to P8. But I'm just more, I'm more interested about that front fight again wow again red bull have an open goal this one was even more of an open goal than miami and they've missed it they've stuffed it and verstappen dns here's our winner pulling their ferrari into park Ferme. then what a fantastic race anthony davidson a resounding victory today what set them apart from the rest i really feel the track layout combined with the track temperatures we saw today suited their car these cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature and the driver did a great job managing that as well. They just look so comfortable out there. It's like anything, it always looks so easy when it all just clicks. And here we are, a team that is no stranger to the podium taking their place on top once again. A sublime race today and a stunning win for Ferrari. What an unbelievable Monaco Grand Prix. Pretty much the reverse of what happened in real life. Ferrari getting a bit lucky and doing the business and getting a win, whereas Red Bull trip over themselves with uh, another failure on the engine, and they have only themselves to blame. They are in charge of that power unit for, for them, for Alpha Tauri, for us. You know, it's Red Bull powertrains. It may be a Honda engine for the architecture, but they now take care of it. And that is a problem for them here in this game. They desperately need that performance patch to up the reliability, I think. But also, as well as a team, they should just be doing better. Like, you know, they should be upgrading a bit more. If you look at the R&D chart, Ferrari just keep pulling away with upgrades. So even with the performance patch, I reckon Ferrari would still be ahead of them on the R&D chart. So all around, just not that great for them. Russell second, Bottas third. What a podium. What a podium for Bottas and the for a male team. For us, I'll take P4. That's a good day in the office. Unfortunately for Drogovic, I would have liked to have seen what he could have done there because he had a pretty okay qualifying. He got unlucky not to make it through into Q2, but it's no points for Leclerc, which, like I said, brings Sainz 23 points in at second place. So is it going to be Ferrari, an inter-team Ferrari battle for the championship this season in season one of my team? Who knows? We'll have to see. But for us, look at McLaren there. 23 points to R28 with Lance 
Fernando outscoring me today and getting a load of good points today ahead of me around Monaco. Um, we need to watch our backs. We're trying, like you can see, clearly we're not in the same fight with Alfa Romeo and Haas. We're fighting, we're, we're, we're looking to fight McLaren and Alfa Tauri off for P7. Alfa Tauri, maybe not even in the fight. It's really just a straight fight between us and McLaren this season, it would seem. You know, we've got a rival, in game rival Ricardo right now. Obviously, we have a connection to Lando, so it's, it's fitting quite nicely. And we've got to look over our back, though, because McLaren, they're slowly making improvements and they're scoring, when, especially Lando, is scoring more and more points. And they're only five points off us, so we need to watch out. We need some upgrades, which we are going to get at Baku next time out. So, guys, if you have enjoyed this one, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you are new around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Fallon content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.